Hey there, welcome to the 10 Mistakes on the Sinclair Method course. My name is Katie Lane. I'm a TSM success story and coach and also co-founder here at Thrive Alcohol Recovery. I'm really excited to have you here because I've gotten feedback on this course from others and they've told me that this should be something that is required for anyone doing the Sinclair Method. So I hope this information is really helpful uh, to you. Um, and really I'm sharing based uh, not only on my personal experience with the method, but but also as a Sinclair Method coach uh, since 2018. Of course, just a quick disclaimer, nothing in this video constitutes medical advice. It's really for educational and informational purposes only, and you should always consult your doctor when you're asking them about using naltrexone for alcohol use disorder following the Sinclair Method. So in the course today, I'm gonna be talking about the top 10 mistakes that most of us make when we go on the Sinclair Method. I made these mistakes and I've seen clients make them as well. I'll be referencing information that can be found in this book here, The Cure for Alcoholism by Dr. Roy Escapa, which covers all of the science uh, behind this treatment protocol for alcohol use disorder, and I'll also be referencing other studies as well. So without further ado, let's dive into the top 10 mistakes people make on the Sinclair Method. All right, mistake number one is a mistake I made and many people make, and that is really anticipating that you're gonna be part of the 20% that the Sinclair Method doesn't work for. In David Sinclair's research, he estimated that this treatment had a success rate of 78%. So for a lot of us, the first thing we think is, oh no, what if I'm part of the 22% that this treatment doesn't work for? And the truth is, if we're concerned about that and we're fearful about that, it's going to impact our success on the method. I mean, if you look at the success rate according to his data, really odds are in your favor. It has a clinically proven 78% success rate. It's been research for decades and this is something that's been proven over and over again. So I would just try not to focus on this too much and recognize that it's more than likely going to work for you considering the results that he got in the clinical trials of 78% success rate. And I've been lucky enough to be mentored by a lot of doctors who work in this space over the last five years. And when I've asked them about their experience with the success rate on the method and how it compares to um, the success that Sinclair saw in his research, research, they say it's about the same. So again, try not to focus on the 22% it doesn't work for. I remember when I went into this treatment, I don't even think I was really aware that there was people it didn't work for. And I was just convinced. I was like, this treatment is going to work for me. And I think that confidence and faith in the protocol really helped me stay committed and really ultimately see success with the treatment. Mistake number two is anticipating that you will have side effects with the naltrexone medication and not following your doctor's guidance with regards to dosing and the medication. Oftentimes when people learn about naltrexone, they rush to the internet to look up side effects and when they see these side effects listed, they can get really concerned and fearful that these side effects uh, might impact them. But the good news is that actually naltrexone side effects only impact a small percentage of people and according to studies, um, even if someone has side effects in the beginning, they will usually go away after the initial period of the treatment. According to one study, it said that common adverse events are nausea, vomiting, headache, and fatigue, but most side effects are mild and self-limiting and usually occur only during the initial therapy. It also says that the typical starting dose of naltrexone is 25 milligrams for several days with a subsequent increase to 50 milligrams per day over approximately one week. The drug should be taken after a meal since nausea and vomiting are more likely to occur if the drug is taken while fasting. When I started on the method back in 2017, my doctor did just that for me. So she prescribed me the 50 milligram tablet of naltrexone, but instructed me to take half of the tablet for the first few times, just in case I had side effects. She also told me to take it with a full meal and have lots of water as well. For me personally, I had pretty mild side effects in the beginning. I was really sleepy and I had some stomach cramping, but that only lasted the first 
two, three, four times I took the medicine and then it went away over time um, to where after I'd been on the medication for a while, I would literally have to write a note to remind myself that I took the medication because I had no side effects. I've also had clients over the years whose doctors did instruct them to start at that 25 milligram dose and they thought, oh, forget it, I'll just take the full 50. And they ended up regretting it afterwards because they did have the side effect of nausea or extreme fatigue or even vomiting. And I think sometimes if people take that full dose of the medication from what I've seen um, in my experience as a coach is that they kind of get deterred from taking the medication at all if it makes them really sick. But in my personal experience and as a Sinclair Method coach, it seems like most people do okay when they follow the instruction of their doctor and what was referenced in the study with really starting at a lower dose and titrating up. That really helped me and I've seen it help clients as well. Again, that's not medical advice, but for you to ask your doctor about this and what they would advise for you with regards to um, starting the medication so that you can mitigate or completely avoid the side effects altogether. Okay, mistake number three is expecting immediate results. So, Something that I often remind my clients, and I had to remind myself as well when I was on the Sinclair Method, is that I did not develop alcohol use disorder overnight. For most of us, it's something that comes on progressively over years and years. And I get comments and emails from people regularly who tell me my doctor put me on naltrexone, but it's been two weeks and I'm still drinking too much, or, or it's been two months and I'm still drinking too much. And it's really important to remember that this treatment protocol really needs time to work. I'm gonna share with you this chart, which is actually a result of a poll that I did a while back where I asked people, how long did it take you to reach pharmacological extinction through the Sinclair method? And as you'll see here, the average time frame to extinction for most people who responded to this poll is six to 12 months. And so just a reminder, the extinction point is really a, a place that a lot of people get to through the Sinclair method where they report that they have regained control over alcohol. They feel an indifference to alcohol and some people choose to keep alcohol in their life and drink moderately following the Sinclair method at that point and others like myself end up going alcohol free. I never intended to quit drinking through the Sinclair method but it just kind of happened. The longer I was on the treatment I became really uninterested in alcohol. But all this to say, you know, based on this poll especially, the Sinclair method really does need time to work. Um, the next biggest group of, of respondents said it took them more than two years to reach the extinction point. Um, the shortest time frame that I have seen as a coach is around three months, where people are on the, the protocol for three months and they get to that extinction point. Um, but again, in my experience, that six to 12 months is about average from what I've seen. Some people do take longer and some people will get there more quickly. I would say I was personally about an average case. It took me about nine months to reach extinction through this method and I continued to consume alcohol for a few months after that, uh, but eventually about you know, uh, what was it, like 15 months after I started the Sinclair Method, I ended up giving up alcohol just because I tell people I kept forgetting to drink because I was completely uninterested in alcohol. But just wanna reiterate again that this method really does need time to work. And so to remember that, I think it can really help um, you to, to stick it out really for the long term and not give up too soon. So mistake number four is not following the Sinclair Method protocol 100% of the time. In other words, not not being compliant with the medication and the protocol 100% of the time. In the book, The Cure for Alcoholism, it has a whole section on this where it calls it the golden rule of the method. And I'm gonna read an excerpt from the book what it says about this. So it says, if you are a patient following the Sinclair method, you have only one absolute rule. Take naltrexone before drinking. You must take your medication for the rest of your life, but only when you drink alcohol. Following this golden rule is easy to do. Always take your medication before drinking. As a Sinclair Method coach, over the last several years, I've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of people who are using the Sinclair Method protocol. And through that experience, I've seen it happen where people stopped following the golden rule of the treatment, or in other words, they just went non-compliant and they stopped taking the naltrexone medication. And of course, we're human, mistakes can happen, uh, we can forget to take it here and there, and I don't think that's a huge deal if we do it once and kind of rebound back. Of course, 
course, it it can set back progress. Um, but typically, what I've seen happen is when someone goes non-compliant, generally within a few weeks or a month or so, um, if they remain uh, non-compliant, they're not following the golden rule. Their uh, drinking will go back to where it was before they started the Sinclair method, and it can happen pretty quickly. So that's why compliance is called the golden rule of the method because it's so crucial to success with the treatment. One of the physicians we work with, he even says 99% compliance with the protocol will get you 0% results. And while that might be a slight exaggeration, I think it really hits home the point on the importance of compliance with the Sinclair Method protocol. For me personally, my doctor really instilled that in me when I started on the treatment and really reiterated how important it was for me to never drink without naltrexone. And so I'm grateful that for me personally, it was a non-negotiable from day one. I just made that commitment to myself that I'm not going to drink unless I've taken naltrexone and I'm following the protocol. It is that important. The fifth mistake I see people make is using alcohol to cope or chase the buzz. And as I say that, I recognize that this is probably one of the most difficult habits for people to make when they are starting on the Sinclair method. Because when we've habituated to using alcohol as a coping tool when we're stressed, when we're exhausted, when we're tired, when we just want to take a break from life, it becomes a very ingrained ritual and habit that is really difficult to break. And it can even be difficult to break with the Sinclair method. Um, the most common challenges I've seen and what my clients have told me over the years is that they will be on the protocol, they will notice that their desire or their craving for alcohol is reduced, but they keep drinking anyway, simply because they're using alcohol as a coping tool to escape or numb out. And believe me, I know what that feels like. I was a daily drinker for nearly 10 years and I certainly used alcohol to cope. But I think where the mistake comes in with individuals who are using this treatment protocol is when they are not really putting forth any extra effort to cultivate and discover and practice new coping tools. A lot of people, when they struggle with this, they just kind of get uh, stuck at a plateau where their drinking has reduced through the treatment. But again, you know, like me, if you're that nightly drinker, they're still kind of going home and drinking like normal, um, even though they're following the Sinclair Method protocol. And I remember for me, this was one of the most difficult parts of my Sinclair Method journey, where after a few months on the treatment, I realized like, if I really want to change my relationship with alcohol, then I've got to become somebody who no longer relies on alcohol to cope anymore. And that was a very sobering, no pun intended, experience for me, an epiphany for me. And I really had to go through this mourning period of letting go of alcohol as I'd known. It was no longer going to be something that I used to numb out and escape. What I wanted it to be was something um, that I can enjoy, you know, go out and enjoy a couple of drinks with friends on a Friday night or champagne at a wedding and not go overboard. Now, I want to honor the fact that this is a really difficult process for many of us, especially if we've been drinking excessively for years or decades. So I think in my experience as a coach that changes with regards to our coping tools are best done gradually and little by little over time. And this is something we help our members with in our program. We have weekly check-ins where they can set one, two, maybe three small goals for the week that they are focused on to help them break unhealthy and unhelpful coping habits around alcohol and find other ways to unwind and de-stress in the evening. And again, it's a very gradual process. It's not something that we need to figure out overnight, but I think having attention on it and consistently trying different ways to uh, cope and unwind in life instead of just going to the default choice of alcohol is really crucial to um, success on this treatment. I have a lot of clients come to me after a few months on, on the method and they'll report to me that I feel like I'm only relying on the medication. I'm not doing the work. So I think a lot of people are aware of that. And the challenge is that the work can be difficult. And you know, it's work. It does take effort and attention and consistency to make these changes. But in our program at Thrive, Thrive, we are really just focused on helping people make really small, gentle, incremental changes over time. And again, kind of back to my earlier mistake I was talking about, that's why this method really needs time to work. And for most of us, we 
cannot expect immediate results. All right, mistake number six is when somebody drinks alcohol on an empty stomach. And I get it. I am guilty of that. Nearly every single time I would drink uh, before the Sinclair method, I would intentionally not eat just so I could get the buzz more quickly because the alcohol was getting into my bloodstream more quickly because I didn't have food in my stomach. And I think for a lot of us, this is a habit that we need to break as we start on the Sinclair method protocol. And again, it's best done gently over time. But sometimes I'll work with clients who are intentionally still not eating, but they're following the Sinclair method protocol, but they're not eating. So they're drinking on an empty stomach and the alcohol is hitting the bloodstream and they're getting the buzz more quickly. And it really just fights the protocol. It kind of prolongs the progress that somebody can make um, following the Sinclair method protocol. So I recognize again that this is a habit um, that needs breaking. It might take time. It might be a pretty big change for some people to make. I know it was a change for me. It required extra planning and thoughtfulness and I wasn't always perfect at it. But I think re recognizing that this is an important habit to, to break and really only consume alcohol after you have food in your stomach. It will help you absorb it uh, more slowly. And in my personal experience, I feel like it helped naltrexone work even better. When I was drinking on an empty stomach, I feel like I could drink much more alcohol. I was drinking much more quickly, but I noticed if I drank with a meal, I didn't really want to have a second, third, or fourth drink, especially the longer that I was on the treatment protocol. All right, mistake number seven. This is not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but something that I have seen as a pattern with clients over and over again over the years. And that mistake is really around drinking hard alcohol on the Sinclair method, drinking spirits on the Sinclair method. And the reason for that is because this type of alcohol is so concentrated that even if someone is following the protocol to a T, it's really easy for them to uh, out drink the medication and drink a bunch of alcohol in a short period of time and they don't really notice the effects of the naltrexone. I've just seen that happen over and over and over again with clients. And so I recognize for some people starting this protocol, maybe hard alcohol is a really big part of your life. Maybe it's the only thing you drink or maybe you drink it sometimes. I would say that um, if that's the case, it's really important to start thinking about how you can incorporate other alcoholic beverages into your routine or if you are drinking hard alcohol, consider, you know, really measuring the um, the shot that you're taking so that you're taking a measured amount and you're pouring it into a tall glass so you're sipping on it as opposed to taking a straight uh, shot of, of liquor. Um, and also, again, like uh, drinking with food in your stomach, that can really help. But just to be aware, um, I've seen it happen with clients over and over again where they were drinking hard alcohol in the treatment. Maybe they'd seen some progress, but not great progress. And when they switched to something else like beer or wine, wine or cider, it helped them make more progress on the method. So again, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's just something to be aware of where if you've plateaued and you've been drinking hard alcohol, um, that could be why. Or if you really want to set yourself up for success on the treatment, consider minimizing uh, your hard alcohol consumption or just change up how you're drinking it. The eighth mistake that I see people make is around talking with your doctor about your specific dose of naltrexone. This is not medical advice, but this is just what I have learned and, uh, and observed with my clients as a Sinclair Method coach the last several years. So just like I referenced that uh, study where it was suggesting that people start the medication at a 25 milligram dose and kind of work up from there, I've had clients whose doctors uh, kept them at a 50 milligram uh, dose for the duration of their Sinclair method protocol and they did really well. And I've had other clients whose doctors put them on a higher dose and that really helped them. Um, and then I've had even other clients whose doctors had them um, taking divided doses throughout the day depending on their specific drinking pattern. Again, this is not medical advice and it's really speaking to the importance of you working with a knowledgeable provider who can really tailor and personalize the treatment to your um, specific needs. So I think it's really important to keep that in mind because when I've had clients who, for example, uh, were put on a higher dose of the medication from their doctor, oftentimes when what they've reported back to me is that, wow, it really made a difference for me. And so I think it's really important to ask your doctor about this, especially if you feel like you've hit a plateau on the method and what they think is best for you and your metabolism and what will work best for your specific drinking style. So definitely be sure to talk with your doctor about your dosing of the naltrexone medication. 
All right, mistake number nine is not rewarding yourself on non-drinking days. I think that this is so crucial because for a lot of us, especially if we're daily drinkers or near daily drinkers, um, alcohol-free days have oftentimes been uncomfortable before and maybe difficult. But the longer we're on the Sinclair method, it it becomes easier and easier to have alcohol-free days. However, oftentimes the first few that we have are still pretty uncomfortable and maybe we're just not used to it yet. And so I think it's so important for people to reward themselves on their non-drinking days so that they give themselves something to look forward to. Especially because for many of us, alcohol has been our primary go-to reward for years or decades. And maybe if you're anything like me, you don't even have any other rewards that come to mind about what you like, you know? Sure, I would like to go to a movie or go out to dinner or, or do other things that were rewarding, but I would always want to have alcohol alongside them. So I think it's really important to be really intentional with how you are rewarding yourself on your alcohol-free days on the Sinclair Method. And mistake number 10 is when people are not celebrating the little wins and the little successes on the treatment protocol. With my own personal experience using this protocol, and again, being a coach the last several years, what I see typically with most people who use this treatment is that progress and success is seen little by little over time. It's not an overnight fix where all of a sudden we're drinking 70% less. It's more about these small incremental changes that we see in ourselves and how we relate to alcohol and how we're drinking on a daily and weekly basis. And sometimes these changes are so subtle that they're easy to ignore or dismiss as no big deal. But I definitely encourage you to pay attention to the little successes and the little wins that you are having on the Sinclair method because those are signs that you are progressing on the treatment protocol and you're really on your path to freedom from problem drinking. I often equate this experience to like a weight loss journey where we might be eating right and going to the gym and doing everything right, but weight isn't coming off or it's coming off really slowly. But I think most of us know that we've been told the most sustainable way to lose weight is to lose it gradually and slowly over time. And so I really feel like that's true with the Sinclair Method as well, that typically most people um, who are on this treatment will just see um, success in little increments week over week, um, month over month. So definitely be looking for and paying attention to the changes that you are seeing. For example, are you thinking about alcohol a little bit less often? Are you drinking more slowly? Does alcohol just not taste as good? Are you not enjoying the buzz as much? Are you having more alcohol-free days? Are you experiencing fewer hangovers and fewer blackouts? These are all signs of success that the method is working. And so again, just encourage you to pay attention to and celebrate these small wins. And just to share a bonus, number 11 mistake that I see people make is not getting the adequate support that they need for the Sinclair Method protocol. Whether you're working with a really knowledgeable physician or a therapist, or you have an awesome family support system, or you join us here at Thrive Alcohol Recovery in the program that we have for the Sinclair Method, I think it's so important that you invest in yourself so that you can be supported through this treatment protocol. It will help you know what to expect. It will help you see the results that you are after and really uh, get free from problem drinking and put this behind you so that you can go on to live your best life possible. So be sure that you are plugging into adequate support because you are worth it and life is so short. Life is so precious. We only have one life to live. So I want you to be free from alcohol use disorder as soon as you possibly can. To learn more about the program that we offer at Thrive, you can check out the link below. And I am just wishing you all of the best on your Sinclair Method journey. Bye for now.